Presiding officer, week after week I have asked the First Minister about the NHS, and week after week she has defended the indefensible and asked patients to accept the unacceptable. Now members of our own government accept that the NHS is in crisis. Kate Forbes has said that more of the same won't cut it, and she's called out Hamza Youssef for delivering record waiting times. After nearly 16 years in government, the performance of our NHS is the worst it's ever been. It needs a serious plan to fix it. So does the First Minister agree that continuity, mediocrity and incompetence won't cut it? First Minister. Uh, continued focus uh, on the part of whoever is First Minister on delivering for the people of Scotland uh, and retaining the trust of the people of Scotland, as I said earlier on, uh, is the priority and should be the priority uh, of whoever is standing here in just three weeks' time. Uh, let me talk specifically about the NHS, though, because the NHS in Scotland, in England, in Wales, in Northern Ireland, across much of the world, is facing challenges uh, largely because of the pandemic that has afflicted all of us over these past three years. Uh, because of the recovery plan, uh, because of the record investment that we are putting into the NHS, the record number of staffs, uh, we are now seeing progress in that recovery. So take uh, waits for outpatients. The numbers uh, experiencing waits of over a year, down almost 9% in the last quarter. Numbers uh, waiting over two years, down 50% in the last quarter, down 60% since the, the peak. Uh, we are seeing similar reductions in inpatients uh, and reductions in those waiting for diagnostic uh, tests as well. We're seeing the numbers being seen in our NHS going up. Uh, is that tough? Yes. Uh, toughest of all for those working in our NHS, but it is our focus on the NHS that is seeing those improvements and will continue to do so. Anna Sarwar. Incompetence has serious consequences. Dr Chris Adams, one of Scotland's leading paediatric surgeons, says his patients are suffering because of a lack of staff and he's had enough. Crucially, he says it's not due to COVID. And one of Dr Adams' patients is Harvey Martin. Harvey is nine years old. He suffers from neurofibromatosis, which is a genetic condition that causes tumours to grow on the nervous system. In August last year, he was told he needed urgent surgery within four weeks to correct a curve in his spine. Seven months on, he is still waiting. The curve is now harming his internal organs and he is left in excruciating pain. A nine-year-old in excruciating pain for seven months. This is a serious consequences of incompetence. His mum, Natalie, told me yesterday that she can't watch her child in pain any longer. She's looking at private options and will fundraise for Harvey's treatment. First Minister, why are children having to wait so long for urgent treatment? And why are families having to contemplate paying to relieve their child's pain? First Minister. Well, no parent should contemplate that. Um, obviously, uh, other than uh, the details Anna Sarwar has shared with me uh, just now, I don't know the details of Harvey's case, but I, I will look into that uh, and respond more fully. Uh, I have heard uh, concerns that have been expressed uh, by Dr Chris Adams, and all these concerns uh, have been uh, investigated by NHS Lothian, and these are, are general notes, uh, as I understand it, in relation to Harvey's case in particular. They have been invested by, uh, investigated by NHS Lothian, uh, but I have uh, this morning, in fact, uh, asked officials uh, to ensure that we have more external assurance uh, to satisfy ourselves that there is no substance to those concerns. Uh, the NHS, as all of us know, uh, is facing significant challenges. Um, it is largely down to COVID. Yes, there were pressures uh, that predated COVID, but in most countries, uh, the pressures on health services are down to COVID. Uh, that is why we are focusing on the investment, the recruitment, the reform uh, to help tackle those challenges. Uh, Anna Sarwar uh, cited Dr Adams' uh, comments in relation to staff. We have record numbers of staff in our NHS uh, today. Uh, staffing is up uh, since this government took office by uh, 22 per cent. We have higher staffing per head than NHS England. Uh, we have uh, higher numbers of nurses and midwives and doctors uh, than in the health services in other parts of the UK. Uh, so we will continue to focus, focus hard each and every day on supporting our NHS so that it is delivering for all patients 
every day, including uh, children like Harvey. But as I say, uh, I will look further into uh, the specifics of Harvey's case and respond either to Anna Sarwar or directly to Harvey's family in due course. Anna Sarwar. Pre officer, I think it's important to repeat two things. One, Dr Adams says this is not due to COVID. So the First Minister needs to stop hiding behind COVID. And secondly, incompetence has serious consequences. Incompetence might be funny in an SNP leadership debate, but incompetence in government means people losing their lives right now across Scotland. Because across Scotland, thousands of people are opting to pay for treatment because they can't wait for the NHS. And research by the BBC shows that one in five people say they or a family member have paid for medical treatment. One in five. And NHS staff like Dr Adams are speaking out about waiting times because of the risk to their patients' lives. And shamefully, other clinicians were gagged by Lothian and Greater Glasgow and Clyde health boards yep. from speaking out publicly because they know yes. that there is a crisis. Thousands of operations cancelled, the worst any waiting times on record, over 5,500 nursing and midwifery vacancies, 770,000 patients on an NHS waiting list, record-breaking levels of delayed discharge. This is a crisis 16 years in the making because of SNP mismanagement of our NHS, and none of the candidates to replace Nicola Sturgeon are up to the job of fixing it, because surely the people that created the problem can't be the ones to fix the problem. First Minister. Well, firstly, just to be very clear, I, I specifically said in relation to Dr Adams, uh, not uh, specifically in relation to, to young Harvey's case, but generally the, the comments and the concerns that he has cited, I have asked for uh, further external assurance uh, to make sure uh, that uh, we have properly investigated uh, those. So nobody's hiding behind anything. Um, Anna Sarwar must be uh, one of the only people, of course Douglas Ross is in this category as well, uh, that steadfastly refuses to recognise the impact of COVID on the NHS here. Um, well, uh, Anna Sarwar I, I have already referred to Dr. I'm not talking about Dr. Adams, but week after week, week after week, Anna Sarwar stands here Thank you. and wants to pretend that COVID didn't happen. Yes, there were pressures on our NHS before that, but everybody understands uh, the significant exacerbation uh, of COVID uh, on the NHS. That's the case in Scotland, Wales, uh, England and most other countries across Europe and the world. Uh, can I also say, and this is really important, I've said this many times, and I think it does a disservice to Anna Sarwar to suggest otherwise, uh, no staff in the NHS are gagged. We've got whistleblowing arrangements in our National Health Service, and all staff who have concerns uh, should feel able to come forward um, and make sure that they raise them. And finally, presiding officer, I've uh, been in this post uh, for more than eight years, as I may have said once or twice already today. I've taken the duty and the responsibility of this office seriously, uh, as everybody would have the right to expect me to do every single uh, day, right through uh, the very difficult days of COVID and uh, every other day beside. Um, and I will continue to do that for the remaining days I am in office. And I know that whoever stands here after me will also do that. Uh, government is difficult. It's difficult in the best of times. These are not the best of times. Uh, but the people of Scotland uh, are the ultimate arbiters of who is competent, uh, who is doing the job uh, well and who is not. And they have put their trust in this government consistently since 2007, eight times in the eight years of my leadership. And the task of my successor is to make sure they retain that trust. It is precious and it is essential to achieving anything.